Hey everybody, I just want to mention that in the comics section we talk about Rich's Kickstarter and since recording it's been announced that Jim Lawson is actually going to be the special uh, cover artist. So just an update and let's get to the show. This program is powered by Tascam. Tascam's mini studio creator, US42, is your new personal production and online broadcast studio featuring a professional quality audio interface and a number of unique real-time effects. The mini studio creator delivers everything you need for your podcast or webcast. Find out more at Tascam.com, part of the Gibson family of brands. Live from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Brian, Alex, Awesome. And Darby. Bossa Nova. What? Yeah. Bossa Nova? Chevy Nova? Oh. Yeah. Excellent! Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. I swear to God, you get another three. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Turtle Power Podcast. Well, right. for what we will half assly pass off as an episode of the Turtle Power Podcast. That's right. Uh, we've got a, a special edition here. Uh, I am in Denver, Colorado. Yes. And uh, I am here with the one and only Darby T. Patton. Yes. Hi, everyone. The T stands for Tag Namit. Darby is awesome. That's it. Uh, so, yeah, it's been it's been a hot minute since our last episode. Uh, been busy. Uh, had myself a bear bear. And, uh, yeah, you guys, crazy. you guys heard about that. Uh, we talked, uh, we mentioned that the, my wife was pregnant in the uh, past episode. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, that's been eating up most of the uh, time in my life. I've also changed uh, jobs. I'm an uh, official rocket scientist now. That's crazy. And uh, With I mean, your top knot, I can't believe that they, <laughs> with your hair as again, long as it is, I can't believe they let people like you work at NASA. And again, I've, I've already told you, I have the, for the dudes in my branch, I have the third longest hair. The third longest hair. There's two other dudes that have longer hair than me. Yeah, and that's you guys are rocket scientists. Yes. Have some respect <laughs> for yourselves. It is. We have a lot of respect for ourselves, oh, and that. we are uh, we are very happy with our oh, that's loving perfect. locks of of joy. Whatever. That's that's what I'm going to call them. We're also I should point out we're playing a game that for the longest time Ryan and I knew it as Rat's Ass, but it's actually called uh, Poo Head for the PG people. Uh, Ryan found his deck of Ninja Turtle playing cards from... Circa 1993, I believe. Something like that. Yeah. So we're, we've been playing this game, and we're going to keep playing it. Uh, so if you hear me yeah. bitch about Ryan getting a three for the 70th time in a row, you'll know why. Is it my turn or your turn to go? Uh, my turn. Okay. Uh, so this is Circa 1993. These are the cards. where They are quite interesting. It's a, it's a yellow pack. Why are you holding up the deck of cards like so, they can see it? So I'm looking at it. No, but you're like aiming it towards the microphone like it's a camera. The camera? No, there's no camera. I know. That's why I'm asking you why you're holding it. All right, so the front of the package has, and I should say the backs of the cards have the turtles a la... Turtles, Turtles in Time. Well, well, no, TMNT 3. TMNT 3. Yeah. Right. The the third worst movie of the Ninja Turtle franchise. Third? Oh, yeah, third worst. Okay. Because, I'm sorry, Michael Bay's one and two worst, yeah. Uh, I said it. So... Come at me. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, Yellow they're all box. Di- they're, all, they're all dressed up. In, in their, their samurai gear. Samurai garb. The, uh... What were they, what were they called in the movie? What was the, uh... 
Oh god. Yeah. Kappa. Kappa. Kappa, yeah. Kappa. Kappa. So uh so uh and then but the interesting part is you flip the actual cards around and they're the Archie turtles. Yeah, we noticed yeah. that. They yeah. definitely look like Archie animated turtles on the on the actual King Queen face side. Yeah. Raphael yeah. is the diamond, Michelangelo is the heart, Donnie's the club, Leo is the spade. Yeah. Uh so we are uh, we are uh Having some fun playing. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen games. this guy in person in like two years. Yeah, probably longer. Longer, longer. Now. Probably longer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, we're also going to be recording a show. So, so uh, we're sorry in advance. <laughs> did you? Uh, do you have any new acquisitions? Do I have any new acquisitions? Uh, no. <laughs> sorry. Okay. That's okay. I've been I've been busy with my other jobs here in Denver. Uh, but you, you want know, to talk about uh, your your season just came to an end? My yes, I was doing the play by play for uh, I was do, producing the play by play for the Avalanche hockey team and a little bit of the Nuggets best NBA team out here in Denver. So I was mostly busy doing that. And now that season's done, I seem to have more free time. Apparently, enough free time to play cards that are what twenty five years old, almost twenty five years old. Yeah, give or take. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so I'm just here, and uh, I haven't followed the Turtles as much as I would like to, but Ryan's going to fill me in, and I'm just going to react, spur of the moment, and uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, I'll fill uh, all you listeners in as well. So. I just threw an ace down on Ryan, yes, so we'll see if he'll ever do, does it. Oh, you th- God! Yeah. I got a three also. That's okay. All right, so uh, let's uh, go. So my ac- new acquisitions, I did... Find myself a Nick Turtles. You found yourself. That's human, so cool. Human Karai. I did find one. They are they are out and about in the wild now. Finally, so finally is correct. Yes, so, I only I so, only led that crusade for like two years you did. before they ever you even. Did. They, they listened. They how, listened. Did, how did Squirrelanoids get a get a figure before? No, I'm serious. Like, how, how is it these people that these characters that show up for one episodes? That and let me tell you, the only reason I remember Squirrelanoid is because they got a figure before Karai. They otherwise they would be completely forgettable to me. Which is how do characters like Squirrelanoid well, get an action figure before a human Karai? The, daughter of Shredder, daughter of Splinter. Well, they had the man, cr- women crush Wednesday had, uh, for Leo. Like why? Why did it take so long for her to get one? We had Kevin on the show twice before we ever had a Karai human figure. Like, <laughs> That's saying gonna, something. Uh, right I'm there. just going to point that out. That is saying something. But hey, it, you know, I, I think this is something that's not just uh, a quote-unquote issue with the Turtles franchise, but something that's been changing across a lot of different franchises where you know, female characters are getting more respect and more um, more attention by, uh, by yeah, marketers. Yeah, and it still took and Karai that like long that. to get a figure. Well, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I was able to get my hands on that and, uh, something that I've had, an uh, is like an auto search on eBay for years as a, a feudal shredder from, uh, I believe it was season five of the 2K3, uh, turtles and, uh, like so, that old school Japanese looking one that they went back in time to fight that took over the demon and yeah, yes. and became almost godlike yes. in the end. Yes. That's so, an impressive find. Yeah. So this one. Stop it, playing footsie with me under t- the table, you tall bastard. <laughs> <laughs> took me a long time to get my hands on that, uh, on that figure. So I am pretty excited about it. It's, it's, uh, I think it just got shipped to my house. So, um, so you're. Well, it says ages three and up on the toy, right? You're, so, so I guess your daughter can't go anywhere near <laughs> no, it. No, not yet. No, she's not allowed to. I, I did get a uh, uh, a six inch Black Series Ahsoka. Uh, that that would, took a while to find. I had to order that online too. And uh, what else did I get? I got some little Star Wars, but they just had celebration. So I'm, I've definitely been in the Star Wars mood lately. But uh, anyway, let's get into uh, some news. The authorities won't talk to us. But they might talk to a TV news reporter. How do I look? Uh, great. General, April O'Neil, Channel 9 News. Uh, Channel 6 News. So, what's with the getup? You a news reporter? <laughs> In another lifetime, maybe. This is April O'Neil, Channel 6 News. April O'Neil, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. This is April O'Neil, Channel 3 News. Too bad Alex isn't here to do his news drop. Oh, like uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Alex is fine, everyone. He's just not in Denver with the cool kids. So he's, he he's can't not. sit at the lunch table with us right now. Which is <laughs> fine. We miss him, though. I always miss when Alex is around. I, 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 I miss his quips and his, his assholeness when it comes to his appearances on the show. Yes. It's fine. We miss Hi, him. Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. 
And quit the um, tennis. So, uh, He's building that up to use against you. <laughs> so, uh, let's talk really quick. Uh, I know it's been a hot minute since our last episode, so we'll, we'll fly through a lot of this uh, kind of news stuff. Uh, Nick Choice Awards, Nick, or the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards. Uh, the, wasn't that like two months ago? Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, Turtles were nominated for four or five different things. Uh, did not win any of them. Uh, nah, four, it's probably for the best. Four out of the shadows nods and one for Nick Turtles uh, for favorite cartoon. What did, no, what, no wins, do we know what the Nick Turtles lost to? Uh, Spongebob. Oh, God, who doesn't beat Spongebob? Yeah, well, that's Spongebob for you. God. It's like John Cena will have to create his own cartoon if John Cena was the host. I know that's why so. dropped his name. Uh, not to get too political, but uh, it is worth noting that uh, shortly after oh, uh, President Trump's election, uh, his grandson, his uh, name Tristan, uh, was uh, photographed uh, wearing his uh, Ninja Turtle. PJs, I guess. Those, I think those are PJs. I want to say those are Leo PJs. That I think they are Leo. Like, that yeah. definitely looks it, like the two Leo. straps at the front. Yeah, for a sword. it's a Nick Turtles a Leo. Maybe it's not, if it's not PJs, maybe it's like a costume uh, kind of thing. But like wear it around. But uh, yeah, so Which we could have had Ninja Turtle yeah. PJs growing up. Uh, yeah, the you had a sleeping bag. I, I remember that. You had a sleeping bag. I did. It was pretty sweet. So yeah. it was mine. I actually had a sleeping bag as well. You had the the. Uh, the like wrestle buddy deals. I had the Donatello yeah, wrestling the buddy. Donatello. Yes, yeah. I did. Uh, which was kind of like a pillow. I mean, yeah, you could, but you could use it as a pillow. I mean, we weren't all six feet tall at eleven years old, right? <laughs> no, it's true. Um, it's your turn, by the way. So my turn. Yes. Uh, so uh, yeah. So that's still that's a big deal. And uh, also, uh, as I guess, much more recently. Yes. Uh, for Easter, uh, the uh, White House has a uh, Easter egg. Uh, Easter egg roll, egg yeah. roll, egg right? roll. Easter egg. Rig. not not like not like egg rolls like China, <laughs> like China, China, like China. No, not like that. Uh, Easter egg roll, which is like a thing where you roll eggs on the grass or something. I don't know. Either way, the Ninja Turtles were there. Well, half of them, at well, least in at one least picture. At least in the though. picture. This is, we got a again. As always, links are in the show notes. But uh, Huffington Post reported on it, and there's Raphael and Leonardo right there, right in front of the White House. Yeah, and right next to the uh, caterpillar that uh, eats his way through the book. I forget his name. <laughs> Just and next to Cat in the Hat. It's probably a yeah. slightly more... Man, Michael Myers really killed that character off, didn't he? Cat in the Hat. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I for even forgot that movie existed. Yeah, I think he did so bad that Dr. Seuss is like... God, I really did like, forget that not, movie existed. Dr. Seuss's mistress that I think he married after his wife killed herself because she had cancer and found out he was cheating on her. Um, I think that woman, or the, whoever's in charge of Dr. Seuss's estate, was like, after Cat in the Hat was done, they were like, that was so bad, you're just not allowed to make any more Dr. Seuss movies. And there hasn't been one since. Wow. Yeah. Well, no, there's the Lorax. But that was animated. That was animated. That, that wasn't animated. a live action That's one. That's true. Just it's your go, turn, just still, by the way. Animated. Oh, dang it. You, yeah. yeah, you threw an eight. You skipped me. Yeah, I did um, yeah, let's do that. All right. All right. Uh, uh, so uh, next in the news, no, uh, does anybody out there remember Starlog Magazine? You did not. I did not. I think it was probably a little bit before our age. It might have been, but yeah. um, maybe not so much at the end of it. But uh, Starlog Magazine is a science fiction magazine that was very popular uh, in the seventies, uh, eighties, into the nineties as well. And uh, a lot of the past issues are available online now as archive versions. So you can actually go online and check those out. There's some uh, issues with uh, the uh, turtles in them. So we got some links in the show notes. Uh, there's a uh, local comics uh, store spotlight done by comicbook.com, and they went ahead and did a uh, story about Jetpack Comics. And, uh, of course, listeners know the history uh, about uh, Jetpack Comics and the history with the turtles there. So uh, check that out in the show notes. For anybody living in the Northeast U.S., there is a Ninja Turtles and Samurai Heroes Museum uh, show going on right now in the uh, Springfield, Massachusetts uh, area. That's a what now? Uh, Mass what now? No, uh, I mean, uh, uh, how did Spr- you, Springfield, uh, Massachusetts. Ma- ma- okay. Massachusetts. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's like not... not yeah, there's no T at the end or anything. Massachusetts. 
Massachusetts. There you go. Uh, Say it now. Uh, Massachusetts. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's been going on uh, for a little while, but uh, we saw an uh, article pop up about it and wanted to make sure all of our listeners uh, knew about it. It's going on until September 3rd, 2017. So uh, if you happen to uh, swing by the Springfield, Massachusetts there it is. area, uh, go check it out. Uh, Ninja Turtles Blood Brothers is a uh, fan-made film that is being uh, developed by a, uh, it's a group that has experience with uh, live action, audio animatronics, puppetry, latex uh, kind of stuff. So uh, they, are, they have a Kickstarter trying to raise uh, money for this fan film. And uh, it's got 48 days to go as uh, we are uh, recording this. Really? And uh, it's, they've only got about uh, 20, a little over 25% of the uh, goal. So Ouch. if you're interested, uh, check out the Kickstarter link in the show notes. Uh, before we uh, finish up the quick news bites here, we've got a Kevin Eastman Live. Uh, this was pretty cool. I tuned in for this. Uh, Kevin Eastman did a live uh, YouTube show. Not really a show, it was more than just a QA. and a And uh, this was actually put on by our friends over at uh, TeenageMutantNinjaTurtles.com. Oh, and yeah. Those are like one of the first dudes we ever interviewed. It is. I still have my headband from those guys, actually. Yes. My Donatello headband they sent us. They took good care of us. And, you uh, can't be the five. Gee, I wonder what that card could have been. Yep. Wow. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to so, skip you. So check that out. It's about an hour cards. long. It's about an hour long. And uh, check that out in the show notes. And then you might as well just pick up that one, too. Yep. All right. And pick up Raph. He's your favorite. Last thing before we get into uh, the main part of the show. Brian, I haven't done to one card. Do you really want to throw a five? Yeah. I'll let you take that five back no, if you want. that's okay. Well, guess who just beat you? Yeah, you're Donatello, good. baby! Yeah, it, the it Donatello didn't, it didn't guy. Matter. I didn't, I, no matter close. what I threw you, it would I know, but I wanted you to throw Raph down yeah, so I could at least okay. trounce him with Donatello. That's okay. All right, so there is a... there's Nickelodeon is doing this thing where if you text the word R-A-T... I don't know if it has to be capitals, but uh, you can do capitals. Go R capital, Captain, sorry. Yeah, capital R, capital A, capital T... To the number nine one seven five seven, then you will get. Wait, why am I shuffling? You lost. You will get uh, weekly Wednesday wisdom from the one and only Splinter, Master Splinter, Master uh, of the Master Variety. Yes, from beyond the grave. <laughs> Spoilers. Spoiler alert! Holy. What that happened like he's, two years ago? He's talking about. Um, he's talking about uh, the original movie when he died. The, yeah, yeah, the original 19, 1990 film. Yeah, where that scene around the campfire. Yes, tears, lots of them. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's there's there are tears still falling. Oh yeah, from the, uh, we are in our 30s, and I will tear up like a little girl every time I see that campfire scene. Yes, so so these are uh, quotes from the one and only Splinter. Uh, Darby, I'll let you read these. Why so, do I got to do it? Because I'm gonna deal. All right. Fine. So start at the top. All right. So Wednesday, March March 22nd, going to date the show a little bit here. I've noticed, Ryan, as I look at these, every week, yeah, every week to the day, essentially, uh, every Wednesday, around noon, 12.01, 12.08, 12.01, 12, 12. Okay. Oh, you got one today. Yep. All right. So uh, apparently, March 22nd, Ryan got a text from Master Swain that said, for a ninja, anything can be a weapon. For a Ninja Turtle, anything can be a pizza topping. I'm not quite 100% sure if that's 100% accurate. I mean, I mean, I mean, there's plenty of things that you could put on a pizza that wouldn't be a pizza topping. I know, I know. for example, turtles really don't like those six-pack plastic rings. Um, probably shouldn't put those on any, on any uh, pizza toppings. Good call. Or plastic straws. Yes. Especially those cocktail straws. Always, if you get the eight, the six pack rings, you have to clip them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, they taught us. How that many of those do you think Mikey's school. been stuck in in his entire life, just growing <laughs> up? You know, if anyone gets stuck in those multiple it's times, they, of course it's Mikey. Absolutely, of course it's Mikey. Yeah, and then Donatello has to go over there and cut him out. Oh, of course, of course, because donnie has got the tools. Or yeah, Leo, Leo can cut him out with his sword. Raph's just sitting there. Just, Raph's just laughing because he's laughing a dick. Or just yeah, just or he's just berating slowly. Mikey. Slowly, just just he's already smacked Mikey upside the head, and he's berating him <laughs> while like 
while Leo <laughs> he's tried. Like, come on, man, I'm stuck. No, no. Man, he's like, come on, man. He's like, Mikey, you're an idiot. Just what the hell, Mikey? I mean, this is like the 19th time this has happened. Very true. All right. Very so true. anyway, there's one. Uh, another one is to air is human. To truly cause mayhem takes the skill of a ninja turtle. Okay. I like though you did it in the voice. Okay, fine. You want me to so, do the voice? Yeah, I like the, the voice. Do the voice. All right, I'll do a voice. It's not going to be the as good as anybody else's. It's not. It's not going to be Kevin Clash good, um, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see. On April twelfth, Ryan got a text from Master Spoiler that said, "A ninja must stay in the shadows and do no harm, unless you mean to do harm, in which case, do lots of harm." That doesn't sound like something Splinter you would know, say. I, I thought that one was interesting too. Uh, it doesn't I, really sound. Like, that's not the last one you got either. I'll no, 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 no. I, I thought that one was seemed a little. Um, Especially if it seems like it's designed for kids, that it would be a little... You're uh, encouraging kids to do harm, though. I mean, that's just... Uh, okay, I mean... Hey, it's, hey, it's Master... I can't argue with him. I mean, it's yeah, you can. Splitter. He is Master. I, I mean, he is I, a Master. I'm not gonna... I mean, yeah. And, then, and then today at noon, Ryan got a text. You, you watch the Nick Turtles, and you see what happens when they disagree with Master Oh, yeah, Splinter. yeah. They oh, get whooped. Oh, p- hardcore. That, <laughs> really bad. Like, 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 I'm expecting that. I, you know, Ryan, you just had a kid. I'm expecting one day I'm going to walk in and just see you like training her in, in your little backroom dojo. Yeah. And just, I could just see you just like with two fingers, just ever, just, just, <laughs> just poking her in her forehead, like no, no, and just like putting her down with nope. every single time. Stop it. I get to see it. Uh, that's more, right, that's then, more what my wife does to me yeah. now. And then today, Ryan got a text that said, "The greatest victory is that which requires no battle, like delivery sushi." Okay. Um, Very perplexed on that one. Uh, yeah. Uh, delivery sushi. Um, is that a is that a thing? Oh, yeah, I know some places that are like they'll deliver close by, but not like far. So, but I just I just how is delivery sushi not I don't think a battle? I don't think you'd want sushi delivered like, from really far away. Though. Well, exactly. It's not fresh. It's be, yeah, I would think it would. I would sushi. think it would be a big battle to get it there in time to keep it fresh. The greatest. Victory I don't have any force. Is, you have any force? No. Okay. Uh, the greatest victory is that which requires no battle. Right. Period. No, no, that's fine. But no period, comma, like delivery sushi. But can you have victory without a battle? Uh, yes. Explain. Diplomacy? No, that's a battle. <laughs> diplomacy is a battle in itself. Well, it's a okay. battle of diplomacy. It's a, it's a battle of words. It's a battle of wits. Yes, and wits. And diplomacy. I like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So let's let's move out of. Uh, well, there's splinters. It's a wise texting. <laughs> well, we're gonna. Have can to you get... can you can you imagine if they allow you to text uh, Shredder? Shredder would just be like, "Kill all the turtles you see." Just over and over, just over again. and over. Oh yeah, it's just nothing. Just, but just like, just... why haven't you killed any turtles yet? <laughs> Which is like. <laughs> yeah, it would be. I mean, wouldn't that just be it? Maybe, maybe. Step on the throats of all of your opponents. <laughs> I don't know. That's this. You should. <laughs> like, maybe we need to come up with that. God, Kevin, Ma- wouldn't you love? What if they made it voice text and Kevin Michael Richardson just sent you voice just text? Sent, sent you little, yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Little voice messages of just of like, Kevin Michael Richardson. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I actually I've been watching uh, a lot of stuff on Netflix lately, and I keep forgetting. He showed up in an episode of How I Met Your Mother, oh, yeah. and he instantly just makes all the ladies love him because of how amazing he is. Because he is pretty. He's, he's his voice. Is he just, is pretty amazing. Oh my god! All right, so let's uh, get out of. So there's no video game news. Thank so. God. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good thing. Well, when's it ever a good thing when well, we do have it? When there's good video games. Yeah. When does that ever happen? Good point. Super Nintendo. Let's get into TV news. Alright, so... We got the TV news! Thank you. Thank Thank you. Sorry, Um, Sorry, Alex. I know I'm no Alex, but... (laughs) Sorry, Alex. I know I'm no Alex. Alright, so I wanted to mention this. um, uh, Thanks to Tiger Claw uh, for the update on this. Is that uh, (coughs) um, the original uh, animated series, 87 series, uh, a a writer on that series uh, named Jack Mendelson uh, passed away. However, he did pass away at the... The ripe old age of 90, so 
So uh, he made it. He 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 made it. He made it. He, he fought the good fight, and uh, uh, he, we've got a, a link in the show notes so you can learn about more about his career besides his work with the turtles. But uh, uh, definitely, uh, Godspeed to uh, to Jack and his uh, thoughts and prayers with his family as well. Oh yes. Um, no so, shame in hitting ninety. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Nick Turtles for a little bit. Um, it's your turn. Beginning of season five, ha- <laughs> thank you, has begun, uh, and season four uh, had a strange thing happen though because uh, season four had a DVD come out. Right, a DVD still still rocking the DVDs. <laughs> oh man, Ryan, you know I know we ragged on. I mean, we we asked Kevin when we were going to get a Karai toy. And all that. Maybe you just need to ask him next time if we ever get him on again. We'll let you be the one to ask him the the question we weren't planning to ask him at the last second, but was asked anyway. I'm just thinking, man, that's it's crazy the fact that the show shot in HD and we're still getting DVDs. DVDs. Yeah. yeah Are they great. just trying to keep costs down for kids? I don't, is that I don't what know. it is? I don't know. Uh, I'm not buying them. So. No, neither am I. Um, but not uh, when the entire collection can be released on one Blu-ray disc. <laughs> Well, instead the, of the seventeen DVDs, it would take <laughs> the uh, this 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 uh, DVD release is called uh, Super Shredder. Uh, oh and, yeah, Tales uh, of the Super Shredder. And, Spoiler alert! Uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> Tales of the so it's weird. The DVD is called Tales mm. of the Turtles Volume One Super Shredder, but it actually comprises the end of season four and the very beginning of season five. Okay. Yet it came out. Before season four was even done, so, so whoever bought it ahead of time got to sneak preview. Got to, got to watch season five in advance. Yeah, got to see that new intro. Got to see that new intro. Uh, so we've got some links in the show notes. Uh, there's actually a review of the uh, DVD as well in there. And by and, new intro, I mean the intro that came out like weeks ago. Yeah. So let's let's uh, let's play this uh, this new intro here. So this is, uh, you know, for Tales the, of the Tales of the TMNT, right? And I don't know. What do you, th- what do you think about it? What do, uh, do you like it? I mean, I'm looking at your cards right now because yeah, you put okay. them down face up, so I know I'm screwed. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not too happy about that's that. Right. But, you know, what do I think about it? I think that it's interesting that they're going a different route with it. I remember, you know, when the when the new one came when when this new series came out years ago at first people were complaining about it being more hip-hop oriented and then it turns out that hip-hop has always been sort of an integral part if you go back to the 1990s um not the coming out of their shells soundtrack but like you know the soundtracks for the movies that they did back then there's always hip-hop involved now it seems like they're trying to go a different route with it. I I don't know. I don't know. It's jazzy. It's jazzy. It's, it's like too jazzy. It for looks me. like they're trying to go more noir with it, which I think is mm. weird because the turtles have never, at least not this iteration of the turtles, I've ever considered noir. Yeah. So maybe I don't know. It's Tales of TMNT, and I ain't gonna lie. Season five haven't exactly watched much of it, so maybe they're going a different route with it. Well, the, I mean that the maybe it'll play into the season. The season is uh, definitely arranged a little differently. Uh, we've got you know a brand new character, Cavaxis, uh, voiced by Mark Hamill. Hey, look at that! So uh, another Turtles Star Wars crossover. God, they love doing those, don't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, we were just watching a episode of the 2K3 series where they made a Star Wars. Where they reference. made a Star Wars reference. Uh, Mikey was uh, going undercover, and no, Donnie was the one in the suit. Uh, Donnie was the one. Well, they were both in the suit, but Mikey was talking about Donnie. Yeah, uh, and he said, "What? Aren't yeah, you a little, little short? Little short for uh, something? Something? Something trooper? Something trooper? Yeah, yeah. Um, something, something dark side." <laughs> It was the uh, it was the one with the uh, garbage man. Right? The second one with the yeah, garbage man. Yeah, se- it, it was, was like the a second sequel. appearance. Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems a little jazzy for me, but uh, you know, it's only going to be around for one season. One maybe. season. So, um, and it's like, man, they they got rid of two pretty big characters, so it's kind of like, I guess they I could see why they would have feel like they need a new opening. I just didn't think it was needed. It seems, um, if it's only going to be one season, it seems like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, the last time they did that, the last time they changed the opening for a one season run, it was fast forward. And that was two seasons. You were two. Okay, well, it was felt, well, felt like eternity. God, it was so bad. Fast forward. Shut up. 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 It's your turn. Uh, so... Uh, let's talk a little bit more about season five. We know that uh, Usagi is going to be in season five, and uh, this is a, we've actually got a uh, a cool interview uh, with uh, his name's Sebastian Evans, and he's the composer for the Nick Turtles. And it's actually a really fascinating interview with him. So we've got a link to that in the show notes. That's over. Uh, that's a interview by Matt Edwards over at DenOfGeek.com. And uh, let's talk about this. So, in kind of celebration for the, what you would call, the end of the standard Nick Turtles, seasons one through four. Right. right? Uh, Max Nicholson, who's been covering the, the Nick Turtles uh, since, they've, since they started, came up with a top ten episodes list. So, I figured we'd, we could go through these right quick and... Right, quick. And uh, so so we start off with an honorable mention, so it's actually top 11. You're top 11. Uh, number 11, Transdimensional Turtles. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, I think you have to include that in the list. Um, it's a, uh, you know, it was it was certainly a episode where they, they tried a lot of things. Right. But um, uh, it, at, you know, it, it was their version of... Of uh, Turtles, Turtles Forever. Forever, right? Yeah. So they, you know, they tried. They tried hey, they to fit it origi- all into. They, they, they got the original voice. They did get the original board, voice so actors. I gotta so. respect them for that. Yeah. So they they just squished a lot into thirty to thirty minutes. But um, and that wasn't that the episode with the uh, Megan Fox reference? I think it was. I, don't know. I think it was. I try to block out that Megan Fox is even a part of this universe. <laughs> uh, number ten, Metalhead Rewired. That was a good one. It was a good one. Uh, Anything with Metalhead. I dig Metalhead this was, time. Well, right? it was a Donnie episode, so of course you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you number... mean the best turtle start in an episode and I liked it? Of course. <laughs> uh, number nine is Turtles in Time. So uh, this was uh, season three's Turtle in Time was uh, the green team's first real experience with time travel. Uh, of course, this had uh, Renette and uh, uh, Savatini Romero. So... Uh, uh, yeah, that was definitely a good episode. I remember that one. Number eight, The Good, The Bad, and Casey Jones. So this was our first real uh, Casey jones Raphael team-up episode. Nice. Number seven, Target, April O'Neil. So this one, I'll read the description here. Uh, while its stakes are relatively low, Target, April O'Neil may be the best standalone episode the series has to offer. Wow. When Karai starts hunting April down, both Casey and the Turtles join the fight against the Foot and Chrome Dome in one awesome, funny, interweaving storyline. This was also the first time we saw April's human life collide with her mutant life in a major way. Uh, I I do recall that episode now. Uh, Number six, Annihilation Earth. Oh, yeah. Oh, you You mean... You gotta have this one in there. That's... (laughs) You mean the one that pulled a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? There you go. Right quick... (laughs) There you go. Hey, we just killed Master Splinter. Oh, and the world blew up. So everyone's dead. Gotcha. Spoilers. Uh, number five, Tale of the Yokai. Oh, this was a fantastic episode. Which one was that one? This is the um, flashback to show Shredder's origin. 
uh, well, Master Splinter and Shredder's origin. This was their version of the the Shredder Splinter origin story. Right. I remember I had that that great clip from the uh, from the episode in our uh, in our podcast episode too. So uh, it talks about Tang Shen and everything, and so Tang Shen, yeah, fantastic. Episode. How come we haven't seen more of her? I mean, really, in the comics and the TV shows, she's just such a major character that plays such a vital point to the Turtles and the Shredder. Uh, splinter rivalry like I don't know I just feel like a character that has that big of an impact on the story deserves more screen time well yeah on the screen definitely you don't really see that much of her but no, in the comics of, you do in the comics in the she's, comics she's, she's plays yeah I mean, I mean City Fall had her featured pretty yeah. well and that was that was brilliant yeah. that scene with her and Leo mm-hmm. like that's why I think she needs to be Feature I'm, I'm right there with I you. I mean, she's she, She's the turtle's grandmother. Our turtle's mother. So, well, not mother, well, mother, but depending on mother, which version of yeah. it, yeah, like, it could be. Yeah, I mean, she didn't raise them like a mother because obviously of what happened to her. But right. still, like yeah. your father's wife, your father's dead wife. Like, come on. Yeah, I feel like she should be playing more of a role. Uh, number four, Vision Quest. This is uh, at the farmhouse and where the turtles get all. Um, uh, Mystic uh, Ninja esque, if you will. God, even um, those guys got a toy before. They yeah, wind, arrived. forest, uh, fire, and mountain. Uh, those I didn't realize that that was their four things. Uh, number three, the gauntlet. So this is uh, it says the most notable thing about this episode is that it's the first time the turtles fight Shredder one on one, and boy is it brutal. After seven episodes of building up the main conflict in season one, the gauntlet pays off in a big stylized brawl isn't that the one where they start fighting fish face and dog pound first and then shredder shows up like at the end and they pretty much have to dip out i think so they realize oh we can't win so they dip out i think so all right uh number two worm quake uh this was a good one i remember this one uh so this is the one that says uh this has the 87 turtles cameo uh, at the end. So if you guys remember that one where they, they had their first kind of uh, comeback. Uh, number one, the invasion. Uh, it's the end of the world again. Uh, again. In terms of balancing action, humor, and drama, the invasion is the big kahuna of season finales. This episode has just about everything from big emotional twists to jaw-dropping spectacle. At the same time, this episode never gets too dark and maintains a sense of fun throughout. Basically, it's TMNT at its finest. Well done there. Uh, when Max. was that article written? Uh, that was uh, that was written in March. Okay. So yeah. fairly recently. Yeah. It's your turn. It is my turn. Um, so in kind of the same fashion, um, Comic Book Resources came up with a list of not necessarily the best episodes, but 16 reasons why the Nick Turtles ruled. Like, ruled over what? Uh, just more like, dude, this rules. Yeah, I yeah. just didn't know if that meant it was better than the other. Party on, bro. I didn't know if that meant it was better than the other ones. I don't know. All right, number 16, the designs. I swear to God, if I could just get a three in this game, but I just can't. <laughs> Ryan somehow, like I swear to God, I keep saying it. This was the Wild Wild West. I would have shot Ryan multiple times for cheating. Uh, number in this game. 15, the voice actors. Number 14, it expands the turtles' personalities. Yeah, I'd say it does It does a pretty good job of that. We were just talking about that with the 2003 series. Oh, I thought the, two th- I thought the 2K3 series did it better than the, uh, any of the other series did. But the thing is, and I, where I agree with them, I also feel it needs to be pointed out that a lot of us grew up with the 87 series where the turtles were not very different in terms of their personality and how they acted. It was mostly just, oh, red's my favorite color, so I like the red one. Even though purple wasn't my favorite color, I still like Donatello the best. That was me. I'm weird. Uh, Let's see. Number 13 is the humor. Yeah, it's definitely got good humor in in this uh, series. Oh, yeah, definitely. Number 12, the cartoons. And, of course, we're talking about the in-universe cartoons. Space Heroes. Uh, uh, Space Heroes was the best one. No, I, I, the the uh, <laughs> the Chris Bradford's uh, Too Rough Crew is my favorite because the Chris Bradford that they have in there is, of course, this is a knockoff of the short-lived Chuck Norris Karate Commandos, right? And I still have my Chuck Norris action figures, 
and it freaking looks exactly the same. Yeah, you would. Oh my gosh, so good. Uh, number eleven, Splinter. Number ten, Shredder. Okay, wait, 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 wait. All right, we're waiting. You know. Okay, I dig the Splinter, but here's the thing. Mm. Here's the thing. Wow, Ryan just got his twelfth three in a row. <laughs> Man, freaking tastic. Yeah. Um, here's the thing about Splinter. This Splinter, anyway. Yes. I like him. Mm-hmm. But I like the 2K3 Splinter better. 2K3 Splinter never died. Oh, man. Come on now. Spoiler alert. Oh, spoiler from two seasons ago. Derp de derp de derp. Yeah, well. Uh, all right. So, uh, number 10, the Shredder. But I will say this I think the current Splinter, if all three of the Splinters fought, Battle Royale style, current Splinter would win. I'll give you that. Yeah. Uh, number nine, the Japanese culture. Yes. Number eight, the mutants. Well, let's let's talk about Japanese culture for a second. They've definitely yeah, after you go focused in on this like way more than you mentioned about like the eighty seven series, right? Oh yeah. Um, the eighty seven series, it was almost like a caricature of Japanese culture. If you oh, think about it, yeah. I mean, it really was. But then again, it was the eighties. Yeah. It was a different time. Yeah, good point. We weren't as global back then. We weren't as globally connected as we are now or as well-informed as we are now. Yeah. So it is what it is. Um, Plus, I mean, the New York they had to go off of was 1987 New York, which from what I understand was just a, the very definition of a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number eight, the mutants. A lot of mutants in this show. A lot, yes. A lot of... So yeah. much that it almost takes away from it. And not, not like mutant of the week. Like... Established mutant characters. Yeah, like they stick around for a while. Yeah. Number seven, the Krang. Um, yeah. Eh. The Krang. That was that was a contentious part of the show for me at the beginning. How the Krang were. They I, they were very annoying for me at first. I couldn't stand it. Krang thinks we Krang yeah, needs they... to Krang Krang <laughs> Krang Krang thinks we need Krang Krang. <laughs> it didn't help that they got two of the most annoying celebrities ever in terms of voice acting oh, wow. to voice the other Which like the are... big ones Krang well Krang Prime was Roseanne Barr yes. and then the number two Krang was Gilbert Gottfried so there it was like it was like hey alright we already know these. this race is annoying how do we like who do we really get that'll just make people go god shut up Krang good point number six the side characters um, so basically, you got uh, eight Casey, April, Karai. Yeah. No Irma. Well, you had Irma for a little she, bit, and then like, she turned into a crane. Well, turned or she, out was she was a crane. Yeah. I guess, yeah, she didn't turn into a crane. Uh, let's see, what else have we got here? Number five. Which, which kind of bothers oh. me. Like, look, I, I was never the biggest Irma fan, but she serves a purpose, and part of me is just kind of like, man, you created this version of Irma that we were. I don't want to say hyped on, but we were curious about. And then I was like, yeah, this totally could be Irma in high school or middle school or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and then turns out it's not even a real person. So it's kind of like, you know what? I was a little bummed out about that. Yeah. Uh, number five, that crossover. Of course, referring to the uh, their version of Turtles Forever, that episode. Yep. Uh, number four, the weirdness. Yeah, the show's had some weird, some weird points. Like what? Um, uh, I would say, um, let's let's say uh, there's been a few. Okay, here we go. The the frogs. See, I was gonna say the dream beavers. The dream beavers, very good. Or the squirrelanoids. Or the squirrelanoids. Yeah. Yeah, there's been some there's been some weird parts of the show. But the but, frogs were weren't they sort of a call out to the frogs from the eighty seven series? Yes. To so, some degree. I could understand wanting Napoleon it was Napoleon Dynamite as a frog. Yeah, exactly, that's right. Because he was Napoleon. They were it, he, Napoleon they, Rasputin. They, uh, yeah. they were named after world leaders. Napoleon like, brought a frog. There was uh There was a Rasputin. Yep. Yeah. There was uh for the love of me, I couldn't two. tell you the yeah, other two yeah, names. That's okay. Um, but it is what it is. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. You had to put the frogs in there because they were a callback to past it was, characters. It was a good callback. What back. the hell were the Dream Beavers? I, I, I know what the squirrel noise were. They were the aliens. Fine. I get it. They're, they're the xenomorphs. Fine. Yeah. But who were the Dream Beavers? Uh, it was... And then when they beat them in the end, it was like it was so anticlimactic. Yeah. I don't know. 
Anyway, it's your turn. Uh, number three, Turtles in Space. Turtles. Well, you know, in and I think it's interesting. Do you, do you ever have this kind of stuff happen to you where you'll um, uh, somebody will bring up something like this and they're like, ah, they got, they got the turtles in space now. What they, what is that? Turtles are in space, and then, and as, then you the, realize. as the smart fan, you have to be like, well, actually, the turtles have a long history of of being mm, in, in space. space. So, um, kind of have to be, sort of a thing. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, that, that was all you know that's all Peter Laird too I mean not now but back then it was any any sci-fi stuff I feel I'm pretty sure came from Laird yeah, probably uh, number two the fight scenes yes they have the been, fight scenes on this show very probably good. the best of the three animated series I'd I, say probably even better than 2K2 two, 2K3 two, had its moments of, of fighting like epic awesomeness but it, they were nowhere near as like complex i mean it looked like i mean with the the nick turtles it looked like they had um like actual actors or actual martial artists like with motion cap. motion capped to to figure i mean it, it, they've done an amazing job I don't, I don't know how they did it uh and the number one the shredder fight which one uh they're going back all the way to the gauntlet the original one where even where shredder poses just like he does in the that oh, yeah. first episode. Right when he lands, yeah. 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 Like he does in the first comic, you the mean. Fir- yeah, the first episode. Or, yeah, the first issue, sorry. Yeah. Yep. It's your turn. So, that is the uh, that is that list. So, uh, that was a pretty good list. Yeah. I'd say so. All right. Moving on. So, we mentioned it earlier. This is the last episode, or this is the last season of the... It's hard to even say it's the last episode of the Nick Turtles because I almost feel like the original Nick Turtles has already ended. It ended with season four. Because now they're doing Tales of Turtles. Now we're doing Nick Tales of Turtles. Nick Tales Turtles. That's short. No, that doesn't really Nick Tales of the TMNT. Yeah, there you go. Nick TTMT. Nick, Nick, yeah. Taught him, taught MNT. Tales of the T. Tales of the TMNT. So taught TMNT. Tales of the and then TMNT. There you go. So taught. Tot TMNT. So Tot for short. So we get one one season of Tot TMNT. Or just one season of Tot. Uh, one season of Tot. There we go. And then... Sure, uh, Then we're going into a whole new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. Right. This is going to be a 2D series. This was uh, uh, originally uh, reported on by Variety. They were probably given the info... By Nickelodeon, by Viacom, and uh, and Variety released the info. But uh, nevertheless, the uh, the Nick Turtles getting a complete reboot into a two D version. This version is going to be co executive produced by Andy Suriano, who is a character character designer for the critically acclaimed Adult Swim series Samurai Jack. Ooh, nice, and. Mr. Ant Ward. You know what? If they went with that animation style in Samurai Jack, I think I'd be completely okay with it. Mm. Tell you the truth. <laughs> so Ant Ward is a supervising producer. Especially the new Samurai Jack. So. Uh, of the uh, current Nick Turtles. So uh, no mention of Ciro, no mention of Brandon. So it looks like those guys are going to be on their way out. Uh, the new series will be starting in fall 2018. So you know they've already got to be up in Adam and animating this stuff and getting all the voice in, voices in and everything. So they've got to be hard at work on that already. So Something, yeah. Uh, it says, Rise, this is called Rise of the TMNT. So, Rot. No, that doesn't sound right. Rot. Um, Rise of the TMNT. Yeah. R-O-T. Rotten. T. Ah, Rodmanton. 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 Okay. Uh, so we'll just call it Rot. I still like Todd better. Rise. Uh, Dude, that was the worst Palpatine. That is... That sounded like Palpatine burping. Lord Vader. No. Rise. No, that was... That's what, he, that's what he does. No. Okay. No, uh, doesn't so sound like Rise that. will follow T, uh, Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, and... Oh, okay. No Michelangelo. Michelangelo's off the show. Yep. Oh. Yep. Oh. Just all, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, it's the rise. Uh, it's all four. <laughs> on a on all new adventures as they seek to unlock the mystical secrets of New York City. 
from the tallest skyscrapers to the dirt, the I like this from the tallest skyscraper okay. to the dankest sewer drain. That does that's not proper usage of the word dank. Uh, the, <laughs> As somebody who lives in Colorado, that is just not proper usage of the word dank. The turtles will encounter turtle. absurd new mutants and battle bizarre creatures, all while enjoying their favorite slice of pizza. Tapping into mystic ninja powers they never knew existed, the four brothers must learn to work together and navigate the perils of the modern age and hidden realms in order to fulfill their destiny to become a team of heroes. Okay. That's deep. That's deep, yo. That is deep. With all that mystical powers. Watch me not be able to beat that six. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Is that a moment there? Hey, you might as well pick that one up, too. Yep. And I and win. Darby wins. Darby wins again. Uh, so that is all we have for... Uh, I mean, obviously, not a whole lot of, of news on the new series, but uh, when we hear more, we will let you know. So heading out of TV news, we are heading into collecting news. I really hope they make it look like Samurai Jack now that you got me going on that one. From Playmates! Uh, we're not going to get too much into Toy Fair. We've got links uh, over at uh, Toy Arc. You can get all of the details on all of the uh, new toys that are going to be coming out from Playmates and uh, many other uh, different uh, companies. Uh, TMNT WWE Crossover uh, number two was officially announced by uh, Corey Graves, who's a uh, former WWE uh, wrestler, and now um, he's a uh, announcer. No, not uh, announcer. I think Donatello got the best wrestler. But uh, it's, it's, this the one thing that's be different with this is that it's going to be available everywhere, as opposed to Series One, which was a Walmart exclusive. So who was Raphael dressed up as? The Rock. That's right, he was. Yeah, Sting, and now The Rock. He was Sting, and now he's The Rock. Yeah. So Donatello was The Undertaker. What is he now? Now he is... I'll see you're going to make me bring it up here. Uh, is he... What the heck is Leo supposed to be? Oh, he is uh, Ultimate Warrior. Okay. And Mikey's Roddy Roddy Piper, it looks like. And yeah. what was Leo? Leo is... I'm going to let you tell me who that is. You probably don't even know. He's Finn Balor. Oh, okay. Very good. It's Balor, but that's okay. Balor, Baylor. <laughs> Same spelling. Baylor. Uh, yes. So Interesting that they would go new school with him. It, Finn's got a look. He does. He's got a look. So Even though he's Finn's only wrestled awesome. like two months in his entire tenure with no, WWE. No, 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 no. Keeps getting injured every time no, he comes back he, for months at a time. He was in NXT for two years. Yeah. Uh, before and then, that. And then, he, and then before, what happened when he got called up to the main roster? That's not his fault. Yeah, that's Seth Rollins' da, 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 da. fault. Okay. That's Seth Rollins' fault. That's fine. Uh, Bebop is ready for pre-order now uh, over at Good Smile. Uh, Who's Bebop dressed up as? This is not a WWE thing. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, this is just a really cool... Wouldn't it be funny if Rocksteady was dressed up as Sheamus? <laughs> that would be good, actually. Um, all right, so... Uh, yeah, check this out. I mean, look at look at this detail on this thing. What the? It's pretty legit, right? And you can take the glasses off and everything. Except this mohawk's pink. It is pink. It's very pink. But that's one hell of a knife he's got there too. So oh, that's a knife. That's a knife. Uh, so this is uh, the same company that made that really cool shredder um, uh, statue as well. So. Uh, you can uh, pre-order now. Uh, this is gonna be. It's gonna run you about one hundred and sixty dollars. It's uh, eighteen thousand yen, if wow. uh, you prefer yen. So I mean, if you got the yen, if you've got the yen, then might as well. Maybe use not the it dollars, away. but the yen. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, preview of the TMNT series three from Hero Clicks: Shredder's Return. So we've got a link to that if, uh, if you're into the hero clicks. I know Alex has some of those. And a Funko Pop TMNT checklist. So I, I saw this. I could not believe how many Ninja Turtle Funkos. I have one. You have one. I have one. I have Wrath. I have Donnie. Of course you do. 
Well, of course you do. Of course I do. Well, I mean, I have I have more pop figures. I only have the one Ninja Turtle one though. I have two other ones. I have I have White Ranger, and I have Peter Baelish from Game of Thrones, because Lord Baelish for the Iron Throne. Oh, okay. All right, so we've got a. I don't expect him to win it, but damn it, if I'm not entertained the most by him, and really hope he pulls it out. It's coming soon. Yeah, we'll see what um, happens. All right, so there's a. Uh, let's see here. Oh, let me uh, change these out. Yeah, da 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 da. Yeah, ba da ba dee dee. Uh, do you want to entertain the kids for a second? Oh, sure. Let me tell you. Peter Baelish, God, he's he's just the greatest on Game of Thrones. All right. Uh, so, uh, right, let's see. So, force. Funko... No. All right. Uh, Funko Pop List. Donatello. Donatello Metallic from 2013 San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, Raphael. Raphael Grayscale from 2003 Alamo City Comic-Con. You Raphael mean, wait, Metallic. Wait, 2003 or 2013? 13. Sorry. Okay. Raphael Grayscale Metallic. Uh, Michelangelo, Michelangelo Grayscale, Michelangelo Metallic, Michelangelo Grayscale, uh, Leonardo, Leonardo Grayscale, Leonardo Metallic, Splinter, Shredder, April, Foot Soldier, Bebop, Rocksteady, Casey Jones, 2016, uh, Freddy Funko, any idea? No, me neither. Uh, there's, uh, one for each turtle for the Freddy Funkos, there's the Turtle Van, Four Pack, uh, G-I-T-D, uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, the Spongebob Leonardo and Plankton Shredder from 2014. I don't know how I feel about that. And there's a uh, San Diego Comic-Con multi-pack as well. So that that is a lot of different Yeah, but a lot Funkos. of them just sound like exclusives. For well, there were. There were exclusives. But if you want to get them all, you know, that's that's the whole thing, right? you got to collect them all. Right? No, well, they're not Pokemon. Uh, a Freddy Funko Donatello list, list limited to just 24 copies. The 24. They only made 24 of these things. Sold on eBay in January 2017 for $1,200. That's just... God! Yeah, just that $1,200 to spend on a pop figure, sure. But of course it would be Donnie that's worth that much, so I guess I'm okay with it. It's your turn. <laughs> All right, so uh, leaving the uh, collecting news and heading into comic book news... I strike two on my way down. Donatello takes out a third with his staff. Already the pudgy ones are starting to panic. Raph loves this stuff. He's not alone. Why is he narrating? Is he crazy? Hardcore crazy. I love these guys! Ah! Alright, so this is a... Uh... I wanted to discuss this because this isn't really a story, but more of a what if scenario. All right. right. This this was an article that was uh, written over on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles dot com by Justin Wren. The tweet came out while Viacom is struggling, IDW is seeing record numbers. What could this mean for the future? So basically, the uh, what Justin uh, kind of uh, comes up with here is a what if scenario of what if IDW made a new TMNT series? What if they Are made we talking video or comics? What if they made a new TMNT movie? What if they saved this franchise from the huge media conglomerate that currently owns the rights to it? That's an exact quote from Justin from this article. Okay. Now here's here's the kicker that at TMNT actually replied to them and said, TMNT isn't going anywhere. No need to hit that panic button. Okay. Sure, buddy. So we're going to talk some more about uh, kind of the, the state of the turtles a little later on, but uh, just keep that in mind. What What if... IDW were to purchase the Turtles franchise. I'd be okay with it. What if, it, I mean, obviously what we've seen them do with what limited uh, Turtles, um, what piece of the pie that they are allowed to play with. Yeah. Right? Look how well they've done. Yeah. So. I mean, if anything, IDW could just 
buy the rights and then turn around and sell them to Netflix for a show. Wouldn't that be fantastic? It would be fantastic. I would just love that. Um, God, I really just want Netflix to pick up the Ninja Turtles and do with them what they did to Daredevil and Iron Fist and, and so, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so let's uh, talk about a couple of uh, upcoming releases on the comic side. There is a TMNT Eastman and Laird's Mirage Studios cover, hardcover, hardcover. It's Studio Mirage Studios covers. Hardcover. So this it's is a, a comic book of covers. Yes. All the covers from the earliest days of the Mirage Studios in one archival collection, plus pencils, inks, paintings by both Kevin and Peter, uh, including all of the original sketches, behind the scenes in sight, and never before seen works made available through the incredible archives of Eastman and Laird. A must have volume for Turtles fans and collectors. This sounds fantastic. Uh, it's available June 28th, 2017. I'll have to double check that date, but um, it is, uh, hopefully it hasn't got delayed. But uh, yeah, I am I am looking forward to that very much so. Uh, in kind of the same realm, there is a, uh, a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Artisan Edition that's going to be coming out. This is a book that uh, reproduces all the original art to the first issue of uh, the original Mirage Volume 1, the very first TMNT. Uh, this is going to be available in stores May 2017, and uh, it's it's basically a artisan edition. Of, I mean, everybody knows what artisan editions are. Uh, so let's see. Stan Sakai uh, had a, a really cool interview over at uh, uh, EW.com, and uh, it talks about the one-off uh, issue that uh, he is. Uh, making for Usagi and Turtles crossover. Nice. And uh, it says, uh, the anthropomorphic warriors of justice will finally reunite this July in a new comic written and drawn by the legendary creator of Usagi Yojimbo, Stan Sakai himself. The special one-shot story will be available both in standard comic book format and a special hardcover edition. Uh, Usagi is also crossing over into the animated series uh, Tales of the TMNT in a three part story arc so we mentioned that earlier but uh, yeah yeah, I'm looking forward to this uh, very much so hmm. um, there's a uh, so we got we got uh, a heads up about this um, Comic Con in I think it was Brussels and uh, the, the website is uh, tortumen.wordpress.com and What was that first word? Tortuman. It's French. You're French. So uh, the entire uh, the entire webpage is in French. So I tried to translate it as best I could. Hey, hey, guys. Ryan took two years of France. Three and a half. In high school. Three and a half. So he knows. He knows what but I saying. also know how to use Google Translate. So the various yes, but do, does Google Translate know how to translate well enough for you to know what's going on? Uh, kind of. So the uh, it says that uh, the various plates featured the Toad Baron, uh, cool. which will be introduced in TMNT Universe number nine, which is uh, coming up. So um, should say I guess a spoiler alert on some of this stuff, but. Uh, um, I don't think a lot of this is, is too hidden. But um, so this Toad Baron, uh, who seems to receive in his home some well-known characters from the uh, TMNT universe uh, line, including Rat King, Kitsune, and Akka. In other words, members of the mysterious Pantheon. And uh, we'll mention Pantheon here in a second. Uh, we also have a story with mystical characters called the Pantheon. Rat King is one of them. Uh, Which version of the Rat King? This is the IDW. Okay. Yep. Uh, so also is Chiyu, Kitsune, and Toad Baron. And also Jaguar and Manmoth, uh, two characters introduced in the Archie's comics, are going to be uh, coming into this series as well. Hmm. So uh, I mentioned Pantheon. Um, this is something that uh, Kevin and Tom Waltz were actually, at, they were at WonderCon, and they were talking about uh, the Pantheon there as well. So we have a link to an interview that they did with uh, Sci-Fi, like the uh, Sci-Fi channel. You know? Right. And uh, we have the link to that in the show notes. 
Uh, we, we always reference uh, the the uh, fantastic uh, website tmnt ninjaturtlescom run by the one and only Rich, and uh, it, because we always use his website for all of our um, release schedules for all of the uh, all the comics, right? So there's a uh, he's going to be working on a variant cover. Not himself, but he's organizing a variant cover to be released for the uh, the seventy third uh, issue of IDW TMT. Now, Darby, why the seventy third issue? Why the seventy third issue? No idea. Because at issue seventy three, IDW Turtles will be the longest running Turtles comic series ever. No, it's the best one. Kind of deserves and I'll it, fight right? you if you say otherwise. It, can, it deserves it, right? I think so. So uh, oh, this is pretty. Me. So this is pretty cool. So we mentioned a, a Kickstarter earlier, right? Yeah. This Kickstarter met its goal in just a couple hours. Hmm. Uh, within 24 hours, it way surpassed its goal. Now there's still 24 days to go as we're uh, as we're reporting this. It has. It only needed two, little over two grand as its goal, and it's already met uh, seventy three hundred. Nice for uh, pledged. Sounds so like a profit. Still plenty of, uh, plenty of uh, uh, chances to get your hands on this uh, limited edition variant cover for TMNT issue thirty three from IDW, and this is going to be uh, the the cover art is going to be by a. To be announced, Mirage artist. So, mm. the the uh, the big, I guess the the reason it met its goal so fast is that uh, a lot of the uh, I think there was like a hundred of them uh, were actual um, actual hand colored and everything. So yeah. by the artist. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, check that out over on uh, Rich's site or on uh, the Kickstarter. And again, always in the show notes. Sure, sure. So. Out now, IDW series issue 69 is releasing May 3rd. Universe number 9 is uh, being released April 26th. On the IDW Adventures uh, side, Batman animated TMNT crossover number 6 is released May 10th. Mirage, uh, nothing new on the Mirage side. Volume 9 is still scheduled for July 11th, I believe. And on the Archie reprint side it should still be coming May 8th for uh, volume 13 last thing I want to talk about in the it's not really comics news but I think you're going to dig this there is now an official Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pizza cookbook um, I would think it's just mostly here's how to make a pizza and then just throw whatever toppings you want on it all right, so and by toppings I mean Starburst and Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> okay, so those. so I figured the best way to address this is to just kind of take a look at some of the recipes here. So there's a deep dish goulash pizza. Ugh. I mean, what is, that looks like a like, kind of like a beefaroni. Uh, take a look at this. Oh my god! All right, it kind of looks like a, like a beefaroni type yeah. deal. And it looks also, it, I mean, that's deep dish. Yeah, that's a definite deep dish. That's not a New York style pizza, is it? No. Nope. Uh, the Sewer Surfer, which looks just like a Hawaiian. That's really all it looks like. But deep dish. Why do these all look deep I dish? I don't know if that one's deep dish. New York style pepperoni. That's just a pepperoni. That's just pizza. pepperoni. The Breakfast Pie. All right. Which I see eggs. Um, was that sunny side up? No, it's like over medium. Over medium. With um, or like bacon. I don't know. And some uh, some green stuff on there. Pesto, maybe. Yeah. And uh, this is by we should mention this is by Peggy Paul Casella, photographed by Albert Lee or Albert Yee. I'm not gonna lie, not the most appetizing looking pictures for these pizzas. Uh, you can pre-order now. It's uh, on, available on Amazon for sixteen dollars and fifty cents. It is going to be coming out May 9th. and uh, it's even Mashable did a story about it too. And uh, they they went through and uh, covered a couple of the maybe more questionable recipes. Oh God! Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's look at this. Here, here's what you were thinking: chocolate chili pepper pizza with butternut squash. 
Toy. Yum. Uh, there's the uh, deep dish goulash. Four cheese for four bros. That's not too bad. No, oh, it's just four cheese. So, uh, yeah, I guess maybe more so the uh, chill, chocolate chili pepper pizza with butternut squash. Jeez. Uh, that, that's a mouthful, too. Ooh, mouthful. Get it? That's pizza. Pizza. <laughs> I joke. got a mouthful pizza, for it. Pizza joke. Uh, let's leave the comics slash book news and head into movie news. Yeah, 122, 122 and an 8. 122 and an 8. Terrific. Where the heck is 122 and an 8? You're standing on it, dude. Why? There's movie <laughs> yeah, news? Exactly, yeah. Don't lie like, to me. Wait, 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 is there just movie news? Don't don't lie to me, Ryan. Uh, so the... It, it's your can, turn, by the way. You can call it news, but it's it's more just a, a tidbit of information, if you will. Uh, there is a... Uh, you know, this always happens with uh, these these Ninja Turtle movies, where concept art, after some sort of uh, time frame goes by, that uh, some concept art is uh, comes out because uh, the the uh, illustrators uh, have a day off. Yeah, I time. guess I don't know. I don't know why this stuff comes out, but uh, anyway, um, concept artists Court Chu and Joshua Min. Uh, Court Chu worked on Doctor Strange. Joshua Min worked on American Horror Story. Nice. Uh, they've got some alternate turtle van designs, and uh, we've got a link to that in the show notes. And that's it for movie news. So let's uh, let's get into our mutated messages. Sounds weird when he says it. Sounds weird when you say it. Nick Pitara and uh, John Lees. Of course, we had them on the show last. Uh, that was last episode, wasn't it? Uh, I wanted to let us know that they had a fun interview. Thanks again for having us on. Uh, they had a lot of fun digging into uh, the book and talking turtles too. Uh, it was a pleasure, guys, and uh, uh, we hope to uh, talk to you guys in the future as well. Uh, Justin M., uh, that's at the Collector Twenty Two. Uh, he wanted to let them know that uh, they uh, he enjoyed having them on the podcast, and uh, uh, he just uh, finished the issue and uh, thought it was top notch. Nice. Uh, Mick, oh, McCartney Lennon for, oh, McCartney Lennon for, I guess, Beatles thing. Yeah, man, that, that was just, that, that was the worst reading. Yeah, I, it, well, it's all one word here, so. Okay, Naga, so, Naga, 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 Naga. Naga work here anymore. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> nice, nice office space reference. All right, so, uh, he, uh, says, he, she says, uh, was the red balloon a reference to Pennywise the Clown from the movie It. I think it was just a reference to, um, you know, the the amazing uh, Cold War song, 99 Luff Balloons. Oh. I, I, that, I, that, that is my theory. By a German band whose name escapes me. I know it begins with an N. Please don't hate me. <laughs> God, I forget it now. It's okay. Uh, Tiger Claw sent us in a video of uh, it's Raphael versus... Wolverine in DBX. Have you heard DBX before? No. It like, sounds familiar. It's kind of like a superhero uh, battle. That Raphael versus Wolverine. Wolverine's yeah. winning that fight. Yeah, Wolverine wins. Sorry. Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, um, I'm sorry. That's just obvious. Yeah, it was pretty obvious. I, I, I agree. Uh, grown- Raphael's, you know, what is it? His, his sigh can, what? No sword on earth can withstand his sigh. Yes, uh, that, that's what was said about him yeah, in the first episode. Right. Yeah. yeah, those adamantium claws ain't swords. No, that's true. Uh, grown up in Sin City 81 says, uh, uh, oh, this was in regards to the um, uh, the director commentary for the 1990 film. Uh, they say, uh, great upload, so hard to find in the States. Any chance you will acquire the sequel DVD German exclusive commentaries? With those directors, number two with Michael Pressman, or number three with Stuart Gillard, uh, I that would love to. Been, yeah, um, if we get our hands on it, that's fantastic. So if if we do, we'll definitely put it up as well. Uh, DPC uh, sent us in this awesome uh, artwork that he saw on Instagram. It, it's a uh, Ra- Raphael Wolverine crossover. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's from that uh, that 
Was that, is, was that Wolverine number one? It looks very familiar. Yeah, yeah. It's that 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 famous uh, Wolverine. Um, well, yeah, he's got cover the where he's got. Yeah, it's got kind of like a profile where he's holding up the uh, this claws in his right hand. He's he's doing the old you know Camaro with his finger yeah. on the other hand. Except it's this is uh, Raphael doing that with so. his size. Yeah, with his size. So very nice. Uh, he also says uh, found this little gem a TMNT score book has anyone else seen this it's a TMNT song and games book from the original 1990 film what kind of games did they have I don't know uh, DBC you're going to have to uh, fill us in on this book uh, some more of the details I have definitely never seen anything like that before so uh, Vegan Sarni says, uh, just wanted, uh, just watched Nick Turtle's uh, Series 4 episode 20, The Super Shredder. OMG, what's going to happen next? Totes exciting. Uh, yeah, the end of that uh, series, uh, or the end of that season, very totes exciting. I concur. Oh, yeah. uh, Tim G uh, says, uh, Tim G! Uh, yeah. <laughs> says, uh, I would love to hear some of you guys' favorite Splinter moments. Hmm. I think we already said it Whoa. at the beginning of the episode. Which ones were those? The campfire? Campfire is definitely, yes. That That's probably the number one Splinter moment of all time. <sighs> yeah. I mean, that, that hits you right in the feels. Because, like... I don't know. When you growing up watching the the eighty seven turtles, like yeah, Splinter was frail and old, but he could still kick ass, like yeah. jump around and hop around, like kind of like Yoda does. But like I don't know, the nineties movie showed that, that was he was a frail old rat. Like he really couldn't do much except whip out a nunchuck and do a spin move at the end. So, like, I don't know, I feel like that was the most vulnerable version of Splinter you ever saw. Especially when he's chained to a wall and he can't eat and do anything like that. Campfire scene's probably number one. I really enjoy the 2007 TMNT film, CG film mm-hmm. version of Splinter. Where he's, you he's know, watch, two wa- watching his stories. Hey, what's your main stories? He's dead. Oh, what's Rebecca going to do next? Right. <laughs> Rebecca is going to dump Marshall. I know it. Or whatever he <laughs> says, right? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I just. It was like. Boys! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turns yeah. on the news report. Yeah. Yeah. But, but he's like hardly in it. He's yeah. not in a lot, no, yeah. but but uh, I don't know. But I, that version of it was, I, found, I mean, if I, I found was going to say a 2007 moment or a TMNT moment, it's probably when he shows up for the final battle at the end and goes, I still got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, very good, Probably very that. good moment. Yep. Um, but, I mean, I also liked probably one of my other favorite moments, Splinter moments, back in the first Ninja Turtle movie. Was when Raph goes out to the movie, gets his butt kicked by Casey Jones, oh, comes back, yeah. and finds out that Splinter had stayed up waiting for him to come home. And he kind of puts Raph in his place. Like, you will listen now. Like, yeah. that was cool. And, yeah. he, and he slams his tail down when he says it. You know? Like, yeah. that was cool. I like fatherly Splinter. I like mm. fatherly Sensei Splinter. I don't know, maybe it's because my dad was a military guy back in the day. But I kind of like, too, when Splinter beats the crap out of them. Anytime Splinter beats the crap out of well, the turtles. He does that in the Nick big, Turtles series yeah, a lot. I'm a big so. fan of. I'm a big fan of that. So I think that goes out to the uh, to our listeners then. What are some of your favorite Splinter moments? Uh, send them in to uh, the show, Twitter, Facebook, Old Fashioned Email. Yeah. And uh, let us know. We'll share them on the next episode. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Uh, and last uh, bit of mutated messages we have here is in response to uh, Toka Animatic. Toka. Uh, that guy. <laughs> uh, that freaking guy. Uh, Love him to death. Toka's just a guy. If you've ever heard our interview with Toka, Toka's just a guy that when you say his name, you just have to go, Toka, that guy. You got to say it with a smile on your face when you say it. Uh, Kevin even brought up Toka in his uh, in his live action nice. or in his his live stream that he did. So yeah, Toka's a good guy. He's a cool dude. Um, 
So, um, but what, what, what did Toka have to so say? So this wasn't actually Toka the dude. This right. was about Toka the character. Okay. Uh, this was about, um, uh, let's see, a Toka animatic that says, uh, this is from uh, Thomas Kingston. It says, I like the animatic more than the finished 3D. Not sure why, though. Um, and I said maybe because it looks more like a comic book. And uh, he says, good idea. That's why I listen to you guys. A couple of smarties we got here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one so, of, only one of us I, can be a rocket any, scientist. Any time I can, uh, I can, you know, beat my own horn or what's that? Beat your own drum to your there own you horn. There, there it is. I mean, if I don't <laughs> toot my own horn, who will? But if, yeah, if I can't tweet, tweet my drum and... and Slap my horn. Isn't that what your wife is for? Horn. Uh, that's it for... Not since the kid was born. <laughs> that's it for uh, mutated messages. And let's get into... Oh my our god, there's more. ...discussion topic of the show. Please, please. Uh-huh. A moment to reflect. Uh-huh. Ah. <laughs> ah. This is a state of the TMNT. And uh, Zerby, if you, if you wanna if you wanna uh, if you wanna sit back and just let me um, kind of go here, yeah, go for it. Just as long as you go in your turns in time, because you're taking forever to move. Oh, yeah. That skips you. Don't you? Da- I threw eights. It's my turn still. So I wanted to. Man, you're to just dis- so sure you're gonna throw that down. I am. Must be a high ranking card. Yep. Of course, it's a three. Because I don't get threes. So, Why the hell should I get threes? I want to talk about the state of the TMNT and in, in, in the various aspects. Uh, kind of how we we set up our own show, right? So Go. we look at these different aspects of the TMNT through video games, television, I'm collecting. Just pick these up with just throw your three down. <laughs> Com- comics and uh, and movies, right? So so let let's talk. Let's start at the beginning. Video games, the state. Of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle video games, there are none. Abysmal. No path. No path forward. Nope. We have nothing. Nope. We have uh, a series of games that have been released over the last few years with very, um, I I, <laughs> I just beat Darby in the game. So. Yes. Uh, I mean, you got I, pull, I was some good cards. No, you got 17 threes in a row. I did. You're yeah, bound to win threes. one game. Yes. Uh, so, so, yeah, we've had a series of games released in the last few years that are not awesome. Good. They're, they're, there are good parts about No, the only games. one that showed yes. any promise was only 20 minutes long. You, n- you never played the last one, did you? Which last one? The Mutants in Manhattan. No. No, the I didn't. Platinum, because platinum games. That's right. I did not play that one. It is a lot better than people give it credit for. Yeah, but that's because they hold it to the standards of every other Ninja Turtle game that's ever come out. No, I, even comparing it to other modern games that are out, it's not that bad. All right. It's a, it's a good. It's not great. It's not awesome. It's not excellent. It's good. Yeah. Um, but that was the last game that was released, and it's already been removed from sale. You can't buy it anymore. So. No, you can probably find it like a GameStop or if something. You, you can get it used, but you can't buy it online. You can't buy it um, in the stores anymore. Hmm. Like, new. You can't. They took it off shelves. Probably because it wasn't selling. Be, no, it was because they, the Activision doesn't have the license anymore. I don't know. So, so, like I said, it. no path forward. TV. Hmm. I would say very good. Between the Nick Turtle series that has been up until this point, Tales, granted, we, the, the Tales has just started, and I'm not a big fan of the intro, uh, but the, the, I think what we've got to look forward to for the rest of this season I am looking forward to it. Uh, building off the success in 2017, off of 2016, and then looking forward, I I kind of have to give Nickelodeon the benefit of the doubt at this point. Um, 
you know, they're bringing in what appears to be some some talented people with a talented past. So, um, so I'm gonna say very good for te- for television. Yeah, I mean, it remains to be seen. I mean, we have one show ending and a new one beginning. Yeah, uh, that's all you can do. Collecting. There is an overwhelming amount of high end collectibles. That are just way out of everyone's price, right? And and random licensing with a, I would say, now, now the high end collectibles, they're very nice and can can, and can be very expensive. The NECA stuff is fantastic, and those are a hundred dollars each, so more reasonable. But uh, I mean, granted, if you want all four, that's four hundred dollars, right? So um, the random licensing uh, with a decrease in standards. Um, and also a decrease in playmate action, the playmates action figures being produced. Um, I mean, I guess I mentioned I was finally able to find a, a human Karai. It shouldn't be that difficult. Oh God! No. Remember how long it took Alex just to get a fish face? Yep. So, um, I don't know if I mean I think this is probably an issue more so with the entire action figure. Um. Market, not just TMNT, but uh, nonetheless, I would say collecting is 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 little little all over the place. Um, some overwhelming amounts. Uh, I mean, like it seems like every every episode we're talking about another 1990 uh, movie version of those those characters made by some other company, and I don't understand how they're gonna be. Well, Ten you... different companies all making the same thing. Well, like, what's the point of licensing? Because it's it's all about just selling the toys. That's the whole reason they ever created the eighty seven series. It was all about selling Ninja Turtle toys. Yeah, from I know. The but it just like well, I... so that's why when the Squirrel Noid show up in one episode, they already have action figures. Yeah, I know. That's why when the 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 frog uh, the Dream Beaver showed up, but it's like you you put too many kids in the pool, and then the pool's not fun anymore. Well, yeah. So. And, then, and that's the thing. Back then, it used to be about like, like back when we collected TMNT toys. At least in the beginning, it was oh, collect them all because there were only seven figures. Yeah. There were the four turtles, Splinter, Shredder, and Foot Soldier. Really, I think you know there were like only seven figures, and then maybe Bebop and Rocksteady. Bebop and Rocksteady. But it's just like, yeah, I can collect them all when there's only seven of them. Yeah. But when you have a new bunch coming out every single day or every episode. It's like, oh, a new bunch. Oh, new. Okay. All right, maybe I'll get... Uh, I don't know about these guys. Uh, I don't know about the Squirrelnoids. I don't know about the Dream Beavers. I don't Dude, I know. like the Squirrelnoids. Dude, I hate them. <laughs> they, they they got a figure before Karai did, and that's just that's just not right. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's go into comics. I think comics, just like TV, is is the, uh, the two highlights of, of the TMNT at this point. I will go as far as to say that this is perhaps the best period in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics history. Uh, yeah, easily. I mean, I said that at the very beginning when I was the only one reading the IDW comics that it was the best. We've got we've got IDW main storyline, mm-hmm. which is about to break the record. Mm-hmm. We have IDW universe. Mm-hmm. We have the adventures, we have the crossovers, we have the reprints. Yep. And the crossovers are with guys like Batman. Batman. Like the number two most popular comic character on the planet. Yep. I mean, I'm just saying. There's a, a second, not just one, two. Uh, two different crossovers with Batman. Don't know if I buy Leo taking down Batman ever, 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 ever. But it both, is what it is. Both ninjas. Huh? Both ninjas. They're not on the same level. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's just I would say this, Brian, this, you and I can both play basketball, but you're six five. I'm five eight. Which one do you think's gonna? That well, you have two torn ACLs. Anyway, I'm just saying, just because we're both in the same one, thing doesn't mean we're in the same. My ACL way. is fine. Don't be getting uh, talking about my ACL. Um, that you broke twice, tore twice. Only well, I partially tore it one time and then totally tore it the second. So time. you tore it twice. Uh, I. I heard two different times. I tore it tore. halfway. Okay, that's And then I tore it and what was left. You can't tear something twice if you only tear it halfway and then you... So if I tear it. a piece of paper halfway, it's not a torn piece of paper? 
if you God logic just sucks sometimes. If you it? take a piece of paper and you cut it halfway, it's a cut piece of paper. Yeah, but you didn't cut the whole piece of paper. I never. Yeah, but I still cut the paper. Yeah. The... Anyway. <laughs> the uh, still cut? Let's boring. okay. So let's see. TV collecting, comics. Oh, sorry. Video games, TV, collecting, comics. Lastly, vi- uh, movies. Uh, movies. Basically, see video games. Um, we have no path forward on the movie front right now. Nope. Um, but as we mentioned before, this may be a good change in the long run. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, you you, you couldn't do a third one. I'm, I'm, I was so happy when they announced that they weren't doing a third one. Yeah. It's like... It's like leave it al- stop beating it. It's already dead. Like for the love of God, just let them reboot it already. So, and so, not let Michael Bay anywhere near it, or Mike or Megan Fox or Stephen Amell, all three of them. <laughs> I don't want. Dreams. I don't want any of them. That was one of my funniest things I've ever heard you say. Hopes and dreams. Oh yeah, Stephen you're Casey Jones. You're not supposed to have hopes and dreams and aspirations. It's so true. <laughs> um, hey, I instantly figured out where Bebop and Rock City were going to be. Even though the entire NYPD had this information long before I ever did, but I instantly knew they were going to be there over the rest of the NYPD. So, Good on you, mate. so um, go back to banging Felicity and ruining that show. The, instead, these these two specific areas, which is is hard for me because I would say that vi- movies and video games are probably the two things that I enjoy. On a normal basis, the most. Um, for me personally. Yeah, for me personally. But here's the thing. I I probably enjoyed the cartoon show more recently than I've ever. Enjoyed no, no, no. I yeah, no. I'm saying in general of all things. Yeah. I probably. You want movies? And video I want. I, I yes. I like video games. I like video games more than comics. I like movies more than TV. Get, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I get what you're saying. And and collecting is at the bottom, oh, right? Yeah. So, so, so for those two things to be the areas that are hurting the most in terms of turtles is uh, sad. Yeah. It's sad for me. And you know, WTF? Why can't we get good TMNT video games and good TMNT movies? But no, wait, let me finish. Yeah, go ahead. And I don't want any of our listeners out there to to say, you know, they're they're not they're not bad. You know, the the ones that we've been getting aren't bad. Okay. And I'm going to refute that with Metacritic. Okay. 2004 Platinum uh, Platinum Dunes TMNT movie, 31 out of 100. Yep. 2016 Platinum Dunes TMNT Out of the Shadows movie. 40 out of 100. Really? 2013 TMNT Out of the Shadows game, 38 out of 100. 2016 TMNT Mutants in Manhattan game, anywhere from a 44 to a 55 out of 100. See, I told you it was better. Yeah. But still, these are not awesome. No, in fact, you said up to a 55. Isn't that failing in school? Yeah, 55 out of 100 is still failing. There you go. So, an F is still so, an F. So these are, these are, these are uh, I mean, you can say subjective, objective. It doesn't matter. The, these, there's, there's data behind this. So why can't we get good TMNT video games and good TMNT movies? I don't know. They had it right with the first movie they ever did, and then they, for some reason, thought, "Hey, CG turtles look better than Jim Henson turtles," which they don't. <laughs> they just don't. Hey, you know it'd be great if we made the Ninja Turtles nine feet tall and able to throw shipping crates around like they weighed nothing. Hey, you know what's great? Let's make the Ninja Turtles bulletproof. For no reason at all, we'll just make them bulletproof. I get the shell being bulletproof. I really do. But the arms and legs. I'm not buying it. Yeah. So, so that's that's kind of where my head is at with the state of the TMNT. Um, so, uh, you know, back out to our listeners. Uh, where are your heads at with the state of the TMNT? Do you agree? Disagree? Send us in your feedback, and uh, we'll be happy to share it on the next episode. Hi.
it's, I'm, you know, we try to stay positive. Try to. Yeah, and, and like we said, TV, very good. Comics, probably the best ever oh, yeah. in TMNT history. And this is a comics franchise. Oh, yeah. City Fall was this one of the best. This started as a comics franchise. So the fact that this is the best TMNT comics, I will say the best TMNT comics ever. And we can't even appreciate them at a time where we could have a good video game or a good movie. Precisely. Back in the 90s, we had Mirage, we had the 87 series, and we had the original movie. Yeah. That was a pretty good time. The, the, this all kind of came up to where, I don't know, one day I was just getting frustrated with uh, kind of the, looking at the overall picture, and I, I wasn't really happy with what I was seeing, so. Um, you get to pull Peter Laird? Just walk away from it all because you're upset in the direction it's heading. Well, I don't. If I sell, I don't get anything out of it. Well, so. I know. I, um, I work with you. I'm yeah. well aware. So, uh, so anyway, uh, like I said, send us in your feedback. Um, agree, disagree, and uh, we'll share it on the next episode. Song of the show this week is going to be another great episode from Shell Shocked over at ocremix.org. This is going to be track number five off of disc two. Thank God for those guys and their tracks. <laughs> Casio Pizza versus TMNT Square, arranged by Prince of Darkness. From the source is going to be Night Riders. I oh, remember Night Riders. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, stage eight of uh, off of uh, yeah, TMNT. Night Riders. Yep. And. Uh, He's already gone. So, uh, or was that sewer surfing? Eh, whatever. Anyway, we'll hear it in a second here. Uh, so that's gonna do it for for us. And uh, Darby, this has been fun. Yeah. So we finally got this is our first time we've ever done an episode together. I know. Live. I know. And I spent most of it waiting for you to take your turn in our card games we were playing. Yes. So. We'll uh, we'll have to we'll make ooh we'll make this the uh, we'll make the cards the uh, the the artwork for the episode. How's that sound? Yeah, whatever. 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 Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. And Alex, we love you. We miss you. Love you, Alex. We'll talk to you next time.
Hey guys, make sure to check us out on our official website, www.turtlepowerpodcast.com. Also, follow us on Twitter at TMNT Podcast. You can follow me, Ryan, at Big Don Pat. Follow me, Alex, at A Rodriguez 2005. Follow me, Darby, at Darby T. Patton. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Turtle Power Podcast. Make sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Turtle Power Podcast. You can also share your feedback with us via old fashioned email, turtlepowerpodcast at gmail.com. Subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And don't forget to subscribe and listen on Stitcher.